Okay, it's Saturday, March 10th, about 1.30 p.m. Temperatures in the mid-60s, I guess, maybe even low 70s. And uh, I have a feeling we're going to see some snakes today. And that's what we're out here to do. I'm going to start flipping all these rocks and see what we can find. In the past, this place has been very productive for me. I even found snakes here on Christmas Eve when it was unseasonably warm. So I don't see why there shouldn't be some here today. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look and see what we can find. If we're lucky, we might see some slithering out in front of us. There we are. The first snake of the year. But yeah, look at that little guy. He's really cute. First snake of the year. Let's see what else we can find. Nice big rock here. I haven't lifted it yet. You're going to see what I see. Oh, no snakes. But a rodent. No surprise there. These rocks have a lot of rodents under them. Which you would think would attract some of the bigger snakes, but mostly you get smaller forest snakes down in here. This big old rock, and uh, I didn't find any snakes, but I got a Jefferson salamander just chilling down there in the cool. It's pretty nice. It's nice and cool under here. Damp. It's a good spot for him. Once night comes, though, I'm sure he's heading over to that pond. Well, it would have been a nice snake if it wasn't dead and half eaten. Decent sized garter snake. Oh well, you know, that's the food chain. This land that I'm on is serves as public grazing land for cattle. So there's a lot of barbed wire fences up separating the forest from the field. So in order to navigate this place, we have to get pretty good at climbing over these fences and not snagging your ball sack. And I see a spot right there. All right, easy crossing. <sighs> Someday I'm gonna get too old to do that. But today's not that day. And a couple of redback salamanders. And, uh, you know, if I end up making a lot of these videos, you're going to see a lot of redback salamanders. They're very common around here. Um, despite that, though, I'm still pretty excited to find them. Any herp is good at this point. I didn't think I'd find anything at all, so, uh, yeah. Let's put these guys back and, uh, see what else is under these rocks. So I mentioned earlier how these guys are, like, the most common, uh, amphibian or reptile you'll find out in the woods. And that's true, for the northeast anyway. I don't know where they, you know, how far their range extends, west and south. But I actually read a book a long time ago, and uh, I'll, I'll post the title of it. It's uh, A Baron's Guide to Salamander Care. I can't remember the author's name. But I read that like 15 years ago. And it had said that these redback salamanders 
in the Northeast anyway, have the highest biomass of any vertebrate animal. So anything with a backbone. Or was it tetrapod? The highest biomass of any tetrapod. Which means if you were to take all the individuals in the woods and put them together, they would outweigh the accumulated weight of any other one species. I'll look up the exact quote and I'll post it. But that always stuck with me. That was incredible. These guys are so tiny. But there are so many of them that they are the most abundant tetrapod in the forest. That's crazy. Hello, little red belly. <laughs> I just made a comment about how this place is tapped, and then I spotted this beautiful eastern garter snake all curled up here. I could have swore I flipped over these rocks. Yeah, I know I did, because I recognize the the brown snake there. So I mean they're just they're just coming out, you know. I don't know. If I just sat here I could probably see a lot more. But I'm impatient. So I'll check back here later though and let's see who else has come out by then.